Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Prevost Den Pro Limited H1 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Hem Securities. As a reminder, all participants will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touch tone phone. To remove yourself from the queue, please enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now hand the conference over to Mr. Ramadan Rani. Thank you and go ahead. Yes, thank you, Kate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining the previous Dell Pro Limited H1 FY24 earnings conference call. Joining us on the call today are Mr. Atul Modi, Chairman and Managing Director of Previous Dell Pro, Mrs. Namrata Modi, Whole Time Director and CFO, Mr. Vaibhav Munjal, Chief Marketing Officer, and Mr. Vinay Jamwal, Financial Advisor, Dr. Saeed Salyan, Director of Research and Academics of Previous Dell Pro Limited. We will commence the call with the opening thoughts from the management, post which we will open the forum for Q&A session, where the management will be glad to respond to any of your queries that you may have. At this point, I would like to add that some of the statements made or discussed on the conference call may be forward-looking in nature. The actual reason vary from the forward-looking statement. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Atul Modi, to comment by sharing his thoughts on the performance and progress made by the company. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rani. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the half yearly investors meet of previous Central Limited. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude to each one of you, our valued investors, for your trust and confidence in previous Dentro Limited. Your unwavering support has been instrumental in the journey of our company's growth and success. The past six months have been a period of growth, innovation, and resilience for the previous Dentro Limited. And our unwavering commitment to excellence and creating value for our investors has driven our efforts resulting in impressive financial performance. As we review the financial results for the HY FY24, I am pleased to report that Previous Central Limited has continued its trajectory of growth. Our revenues have seen a steady increase, reflecting our dedication to providing high-quality products and services to our customers. We have navigated the challenges posed by the ever-changing economic landscape and current global unfavorable situations like foreign exchange crises in many African and South American countries and recessionary conditions in many EU countries. Despite these challenges, we have successfully offset these challenges by expanding our presence in other developed countries. I am delighted to share a significant achievement that has unfolded since our last interaction. Previous Dental Limited has successfully acquired registration with Australian Hedda JSB, thus opening doors to the promising market of Oceania countries. This development reflects our commitment to expanding our global footprint and providing our high quality dental products to a wider customer base. Many of you are already aware of previous student pro limited has introduced a new product segment, Oradot Oral Care Products. All regulatory compliances have been completed and we are expecting grants of manufacturing license for commercial production of these products in the next few days. This signifies, this signifies a promising venture and strengthens our product portfolio, catering to evolving market demand. Looking ahead to the upcoming year, we have poised for continued growth and innovation. The expansion into the ocean market represents a significant forward step for previous Central Limited. 
we are dedicated to leveraging these new opportunities to enhance our global footprint and solidify our position in the central healthcare industry. Our dedicated research and development team, comprising of highly qualified scientists and skilled engineers, has been instrumental in the development of new products successfully. Their tireless efforts have resulted in groundbreaking products like 3D resins, oral, oral care products, and disinfectants, thus solidifying our position as a leader in the innovation in dental field. Our R&D team has also successfully developed two of the raw materials that we were previously importing from other countries. This achievement will lead to a reduction in our production costs and a decrease in our dependency on imports. Our focus remains steadfast on product development, innovation, and most importantly, meeting and exceeding the expectations of our customers. We are committed to maintain the highest standards of quality and service, ensuring that our investors, partners, and consumers alike have confidence in our brand. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you, our investors, for your unwavering support, trust, and belief in the vision and potential of the Central Limited. Thank you for your time and attention today. I am confident that together we will continue to achieve greater success in the coming year. Wishing you all a very happy Diwali. Thank you once again. Over to you, Mrs. Modi. Thank you, Mr. Modi. Good afternoon, everyone. As the Chief Financial Officer of Davis Central Limited, I am delighted to see financial results for the H1 FY24. As we look back, Throughout the half year, we made progress improving and optimizing our business while continuing to invest for the future and delivering on key milestones to drive sustainable growth. Importantly, we have continuously adapted to the evolving environment while advancing our strategic growth drivers. Despite the challenges posed by our operating environment, Previous Gen Pro has achieved growth and delivered sustained operating margin. While we recognize that we have long way to go, we are pleased with the momentum we have built and committed to the journey of eventually delivering best in class results by introducing new products, operational excellence, and efficiency. Today, I will provide you with an overview of our performance, highlighting key financial figures and important decisions that impact our business. Our revenue for H1 FY24 to the 28th crores, representing 12% increase as compared to the same period last year. Our profit after tax for half year reached to 7.72 crores, indicating 10% growth for the same period of previous year. This performance can be attributed to the collective efforts of our dedicated team and our strategic focus on operational efficiency. EBITDA for the H1 FY24 was 10.71 crores, demonstrating a 5% rise compared for the same period last year. This improvement is a result of prudent cost management, enhanced productivity, and our continued emphasis on value-added products and services. Our EBITDA margin was 38.40%. In H1 FY24, showcasing our ability to generate profitability while efficiently managing costs. Furthermore, our spent margin for H1 FY24 was 28% which is in line with previous year's same period. Underscoring our commitment to sustainable growth and shareholder value creation, we strategically invested in expanding our sales force, strengthening our position in the market. We also focused to stay and transport forefront uh, of technological advancement to provide innovative solutions to our customers. 
We firmly believe that these investments in research and development and expansion into new market segments will pave the way for sustainable long-term growth. Despite the global business challenges like foreign crises and disruptive supply chain dynamics, which impacted industry across the world, I am proud to announce that previous Central not only sustained its profitability, but also managed to navigate through these challenges with refinance and innovation. Our financial performance has remained intact, and we remain committed to our vision of delivering cutting-edge dental solutions to our customers. We recognize that our success is the result of the collective efforts of our dedicated employees, the trust and support of our investors and stakeholders, and our unwavering commitment to delivering high-quality dental solutions worldwide. As we forge ahead, we remain steadfast in our commitment to compliance operational excellence and innovation. We extend our deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for your continued support and trust in previous Dental. We are confident that together we will achieve great milestones and create sustainable value for our stakeholders. Thank you, everyone. Now I would like to convey to Mr. Weber Munja. Over to Mr. Weber, who is Director of Sales and Marketing. Thank you, Mrs. Modi. Good afternoon, esteemed investors and stakeholders. Thank you for joining us today on this conference call as well as we discuss the financial performance of previous General Limited during the first half of financial year 23-24. It is a pleasure to provide you with an overview of our marketing endeavors and the exciting developments we have in store to accelerate our growth and expand our consumer base. The past six months have been nothing short of remarkable for previous Dentro Limited in terms of in terms of its performance with many new developments. We have witnessed substantial progress on multiple fronts, uh, which I'm delighted to share with you today. First and foremost, we have invested in increased participation in both domestic and international exhibitions to accelerate our sales and expand our reach to consumers. These exhibitions have provided us with perfect platform to showcase our innovative dental products and interact with a wide range of potential customers and partners. In addition to expanding our reach through these uh, exhibitions, we are also taking significant steps to enhance our sales force. We understand the importance of skilled and dedicated sales team, and we are committed to increasing the number of sales team quality sales team members. This strategic move will not only boost our sales figure, but also improve our customer engagement and push the premium range of products. We have started marketing of our new product range, 3D Dental Raisins, and have received encouraging response from across the country. Our foray into 3D Dental Raisins have opened the doors of upcoming digital dentistry for previous Dental Limited, which will bring in, which will bring in many newer opportunities in future for the company. The dental industry demands constant innovation and adaptation, and we believe these new product segments will enable, will enable us to address the evolving needs of our consumers effectively. As our chairman just appraised you with our new product line, Oradox Oral Hygiene Products will be operational soon. I am pleased to share with you that we have recently conducted a sampling exercise with dentists and our trade partners and the excitement and support garnered for this product line has been amazing. We are really excited about this range of products and will formally launch a lot of range of oral, oral care products in the upcoming trade shows and start building this brand in the second half of this financial year. In conclusion, Prevail Dental Limited has made substantial progress in the first half of financial year 23-24. Our marketing team has been at the forefront of our success, driving innovation and expanding our reach and introducing exciting new products to the market. We are dedicated to providing value to our customers and we are confident that our growth trajectory will continue to rise. As we move forward, we are excited about the opportunities that lie ahead and are committed to maximizing shareholder value. Your trust and support have always been instrumental in our journey and we look forward to your continued partnership as we work together to achieve new heights. Happy Diwali to once all of you. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you.
over to Mr. Ramadil. Hello. Hello. Would you like to start the question and answer session? We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Manish Chaudhry, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you. My, my question is that the trade receivables have increased substantially on 31st March 2023 it was 4.3 crores and on the 30th September 2023 it is 2.77 crores but the, it has been approximately 80% increase in trade, trade receivables without any such substantial increase in sales. What are the reasons for it? Uh, thank you for your question. I will uh, ask Mr. Dinesh uh, to reply to this question. Good evening, everybody. Yes, our uh, sales payables have increased as compared to the previous year. This is essentially due to that I was talking to the domestic market. Initially, uh, in the corresponding previous, the previous year, uh, first half previous study, the uh, data spread was 31.86 days, whereas, you know, for the half year, uh, current year, half year, first half year, that has been increased to 50.94 days. This is substantially due to reason, as already told, that this is the company in a different way export business, export in this, uh, platform. They are also making uh, communication as uh, earlier discussed by uh, Mr. Weber Mujahid, who is taking care of the marketing of the company. They are penetrating to each and every corner of the country. So the uh, data period has been uh, increased with our uh, distributors, with the other persons who are who in the coming days will contribute more towards our sales revenue. And we have made a policy that we will uh, we will stick with this from 50 to 60 days uh, credit period. We we somebody will stick with this. Uh, period and we won't increase this period in the, in the future uh, period to come. And we also expect that with this, uh, this, with this our sales will also uh, shoot in the coming days as well as domestic sales concern. The next question is from Varun Mohanraj of Daniva Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so we've been talking about getting into the dental hygiene segment with our new product line. So uh, I just want to know uh, what kind of margins would, would be will we be having in this new product range? Will it be similar to the existing uh, EBITDA margins of around 40%? Uh, can you throw some color on it? The new product, oral hygiene product, are very innovative products value added product and we are expecting the same kind of profit margin in these products also. These products have been developed and placed, they are being placed in the market and we position as premium, uh, premium product. So we are expecting a very good profitability from this product line. Okay, thank you. And uh, I just want to know the capacity utilization of our uh, existing old plant and also how much we plan to utilize our uh, new uh, hygiene uh, facility in uh, by the end of this year and by the end of next financial year. How much do we plan to utilize? Our capacity utilization for the existing product line is around 40%. 
and we are expecting to utilize about 10% of the capacity for the new product line oral hygiene product in the remaining 6 years of this financial year okay uh, and uh, uh, how much would we be able to do it next financial year so we are expecting that every year we should increase our business of the new product line by at least 10% so that in next 5 years we reach to capacity utilization of 60 to 70 percent so this is our uh, projected uh, growth strategy for the next 5 years so utilization of the capacity at the rate of 10 percent increase every year okay okay so that's it from my side thank you the next question is from parv jane of Nivishe Investment Advisor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking up my question. So number one, I just wanted to understand on broad uh, industry perspective, how is the demand outlook like for these oral hygiene uh, products that you are planning to introduce? And uh, who are the essential competitors that we will be dealing with in this segment? <laughs> I will pass on this question to Mr. Vedu Munjal. Yeah. Mr. Munjal, please reply to this question. Sure. Uh, sure. So, so the new product line that we are launching uh, is a oral, um, um, is a adva advanced oral care solutions. Okay. So, if you look at the market size of it, it is very huge. It is one of the biggest. It, it encompasses all your mouthwashes to toothpaste to everything that is there in the oral hygiene range. Okay, but these products that we have coming up, these are currently the most innovative products that you will see, and are going to be like consumer-based products. And these products are basically uh, are not available in India. Okay, so these are the kind of products currently one-to-one -one competition is not available for these products, and hence this will be an easy target audience for us with a specific set of uh solutions to the consumers that is what we are trying to achieve through this entire product range okay then uh, i mean in terms of business model uh, how yeah. are we looking at i mean uh, bringing this into market like it will be a so we are model. yeah sure no uh, so we are going to use our strength uh, which is our reach through the dentist to be a distribution model for this uh, particular set of products so our strength typically has been our association with the dentist so our distribution channel will include a part of these people coming into uh, the market rather than going the traditional uh, route to start with okay and these dentists i mean what will be the arrangement like with these dentists so as of now we have not announced that <laughs> so i will not be able to divulge too many details on it but as i said we will use we uh, will use our own strength our strength is that we have been present in the market with the dentist in the dentistry for the last 24 years so we plan to use that entire field in terms of our reach and uh, connection with this dentist to further enhance the sale of this new oral care range of products also and reach consumers through that along with the online sales of model which will obviously be the second uh, channel for this Okay, sir. And uh, just one clarification: that 10 percentage increase in capacity utilization. Uh, that you are meaning like 40 percentage right now. So 10 percentage would be 44 percentage. No, this day, uh, no. This Mr. Modi talks about the new uh, the capacity utilization of the new factory, which is the oral care uh, range factory. So 10 percent of that uh, capacity utilization. Okay, so 10 percentage every year, so it will be yeah. 50 percentage, 50 to 60 percent in the next five years is what we are talking. About. Okay, sir. Okay. And what is the top line that we are expecting from this segment? See, it will be very early to say since we have uh, actually not uh, com commercially launched these products, but the opportunity is huge. Okay, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from Afshada Dio of Vivog Commercial Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. I just wanted to know why uh, margins have been declining from the last two quarters. 
other company. There's been a significant decline from almost 40 to 41 percent EBITDA margins to the current 34 percent. Uh, Mr. Jamal will reply to this question. Uh, sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you. Please me once again. If you compare current RKS with this company last year, last year, you will see there is an increase of say almost 11.59 percent in revenue, and uh, there is a very minor decrease in EBITDA from 30.89 to 38.4. This is substantially uh, due to increase in employee benefit costs and other expenditures, which uh, mainly includes your uh, US FCA license, which has increased at 34 lakhs, including exhibition expenses and problems. Now we come, if we come back to the implied benefit cost, <coughs> it has reduced from 2.86 year to 4.78 year. This is, this is mainly due to uh, engagement of more implied force for our production. Since we are going for the expansion, free, including our R&D, so we are implying, our, implying the persons from this area itself. So that when the, when the commencement of commercial production comes into picture, we don't feel any kind of hit from the implied uh, front. And uh, one thing I just like to uh, say here specifically, that the increase in implied benefit cost is purely on account of non uh, promoted vector remuneration. Promoted vectors have not increased any uh, increase in the remuneration since <coughs> September 2021. This is purely on account of uh, fresh workforce that has been implied by the company. And we, we are very sure that with, with this type of investment, company is going to uh, do very good business in the coming year. Thank you. Okay. Okay, my next question is, we, the company had a target that from the 1,000 crores domestic market that they're targeting to reach roughly 4% by the end of this year. So where are we on the same? And also if you could give a split of revenue from domestic versus international geography for the first half of the quarter, that would be great. Well, uh, at present, we, have, we are discussing the financial results for the first half year of this uh, financial year. So we have the figures for this financial half year. Uh, yes, yes, so that's what I'm asking for. This first half of the year is what I'm asking. Yeah. So the overall business growth is about 12%. Out of that, 11% uh, is for the domestic sales and 30% uh, is, uh, is that uh, business growth from the domestic sales. And 1% is the growth from the export business. So overall growth in the business is around 12.5%. 12, 12 okay, sir. We're asking specifically a breakup of revenue, if it's okay. Not so growth correct. revenue. Okay, so we have the revenue 11.41 uh, CR for the domestic and 14.87 uh, uh, CR for the export. So the total revenue for this uh, okay. first half year is 26.28 CR. Okay, okay. And so there was a white labeling that we were looking for to doing for an American company. Any update for the same? Sorry, get, get your question. So a couple of quarters ago, mentioned we were exploring uh, making products and white labeling for an American company. Yeah, yeah. Already okay. we have started. We are already doing for a couple of companies the white labeling, and this is gone successfully. So that has converted successfully from the previous. Uh, yes, yes. We are generating revenue from that. Okay. This, this will good. grow. So this is just the beginning. So we are doing private labeling for two companies in the United States, and we are our relationship and our cooperation is very successful. Okay, sir. Okay. I just wanted to know, Lars, you were mentioning about an Australian company's development. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch what you were mentioning on the opening remarks. So could you just re-clarify? All of our products, most of our products have been approved by the Australian Government Health Organization. And now we are exploring the business opportunities in Australia. We have 
attended a conference in Australia, Sydney, this year, recently, and we have come in contact with many new distributors in Australia who are very keen to uh, distribute our products, and we have done a lot of sampling in Australia. The feedback is very positive, and we are expecting that our business will start in the Australia also very soon. So this includes Australia, Ocean countries, Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji Islands, and other small islands. So we are very confident with this uh, uh, government, Australian government approval, we can easily export our products to Australian market. Are you expecting the revenues from this to flow by next year, sir? Or within this year, we yeah. may see some we positive things? Yeah, we have already done sampling, and we are in contact with the distributors. Now we are working on the cooperation model, and uh, you know the prices and negotiations are going on. Once uh, the things are uh, you know finalized, we'll start our business activity. And because this is this will be the first year, so we are not expecting uh, big revenue from the Australia, but we are going to take a beginning in the Australian subcontinent also very soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from Matt Hurry, an individual investor. Please go along. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. So my question is, last con call we projected good growth for this quarter, and still things have not kept up with the guidance of 30%. How do we see our environment? Are we still sticking to our revenue guidance? Or, we could, or should we expect a slowdown? There is a slowdown to export uh, market because, as I have already explained, that there is a uh, no foreign exchange crisis in many African countries and also in South American countries. So we are facing challenges from these countries. These are very promising countries where we were having good business, but because of the uh, you know financial crisis, foreign exchange crisis, so we are not getting uh, good orders from these countries. But definitely we have you know, compensated for this loss by, by growth in other uh, countries. So we are uh, we are maintaining the almost same level of uh, export business uh, this year uh, in spite of so many challenges. We know there is a recessionary situation in uh, in Europe. So in spite of all these uh, you know, situations and the fact, we are still able to maintain our uh, business level as uh, it was in the last year. On the other hand, we have made uh, you know, great efforts in expanding our business in the domestic market, and it is a very promising market. So we are this year in the first half year we have already uh, you know achieved a growth of over 30 percent in the domestic market. So we are expecting more growth in the domestic market with the you know employment of people as Mr. Minyal is just. Uh, a brief view that so we are employing more sales executives so that uh, they can reach out to more uh, you know, cities and uh, we can generate more business uh, for the domestic market. Sorry? Uh, what did you just say? The last thing I couldn't hear. In the last three months, we do not have the figures at present because we are discussing the financials for the half year. So we have the half year figures right now. But if you have any specific query, you can please write to us. We'll provide you all the information. Sure. And my also one of my question is: last time we projected to capture uh, uh, roughly about three percent of the Indian market share. So how much current market share do we have? So that is our uh, aim to reach to that level. That is not possible in one year so far in, uh, uh, in six months. But we are striving hard to reach to that level 
as it is possible that is why we are focusing on the domestic market we have set up a good marketing team under the leadership of mr vaibhav manjal and they are working hard to uh, you know meet our projection as well as possible so we are very confident that we will be able to reach to that level very soon so yeah, is there any uh, deadline the deadline like by what time we are working on the plan and we are we are working on the plan and it is working and it is very successful I, but i cannot define any timeline for that our efforts are to reach to that level as early as possible and one more concern i have that the reason of export not being growing uh, currently we have export in us only majorly so the reason for not um, our export not growing is only the re recession thing and the uh, foreign exchange or are there any other reasons for export not growing there see as per the data which we have our business uh, has not grown or there is a negative growth in africa and south american country but there is a positive growth in uh, north america europe and asian country because of the uh, you know economic situation in south america and africa so we have lost some business but we have uh, you know gained business in uh, north america so that has compensated for the loss and we have reached to the same level uh, where we were last year so we have been able to sustain and maintain the same level but we are hoping that the situation will in as we can south as america will improve very soon and our business will grow and at the same time we are making efforts to increase and penetrate in the other markets like you know as we said ocean markets and other Countries, you know, we try to do best to penetrate and increase our business in South America, in sorry, in North America. So that these markets will also give additional business in North America and South America when the situation improves, will also bounce back and give us better business, and we will be able to reach to a you know respectable growth level by end of this financial year. Thank you so much, and uh, I also have a last question. My last question is: Do dentists have hesitation to shift to the new products? Like they have hesitation, but they see. They, in spite of their hesitation, we are growing. You know, we have grown 30 percent in the domestic market. It is not that all dentists are hesitant to use the previous. You know, there is always a mind mindset. There is always a preference for one particular type of product. So we cannot say that. Uh, the dentists are hesitant to use our product. If they are hesitant, then we cannot see any growth. So, in spite of uh, you know, we are growing. So that's a healthy sign that uh, there is acceptability and preference to our product. So that's why we are growing. You know, this is growing. Thank you so much. That's all from me. Thank you. The next question is for Marisha Rizari of Pi Square Investment. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, how much uh, did we spend on R and D in the first half? Uh, R and D, you mean the uh, the capital investment? Yes. So we are going as per the our prospectus. All expenditures are in line with the. You know the prospectus. All investments have been made according to that, and we have already spent uh, close to 6.5 PR on the R&D. Uh, you know on the equipment, and uh, now it is fully operational, and we are working, and uh, new products are being developed successfully. Okay, and sir, uh, with 40% uh, utilization and our growth, uh, so plans for next five years to reach around 60, 65. So I think there is no major apex plan for next five years. Uh, uh, not in the existing factory, but we, uh, you know, we don't need any capital expenditure on the existing facility because this has been we have sufficient capacity, and we have recently, you know, installed. Uh, set up the new facility, so there is no need for any capital expenditure in the next four five years on this facility. 
Understood, sir. So, sir, uh, on the balance sheet, we have around 39 to 40 crores of cash, uh, and with no additional capacity, uh, do we uh, plan to spend this substantially in the marketing field uh, or to push the uh, new products? No, we are looking for uh, you know other business opportunity. Whenever there is a good opportunity, we'll invest uh, our uh, uh, our funds for the you know uh, diversification and business growth. So we are working so, uh, on that, looking for some opportunity where we can invest and we can further diversify our uh, you know activities. So any uh, inorganic growth, you mean? Yeah, we are working on that. We are looking for the opportunity. So that's the way we can, you know, look for uh, further diversification and growth. Okay, sir. And uh, can you give me a brief uh, picture on how much are we planning to spend on the marketing side? So you said that for the domestic market, we have set up a new team, and with the new products coming in, uh, with the existing distributors. So how much are we planning to sp uh, spend here for the next three years? We have worked out the plan, and uh, you know there is a budget has been allocated. So all expenditures uh, are uh, you know uh, keeping in mind that other profitability and everything is uh, maintained. So with the, all these expenditures, planned expenditures, we are very confident that we can uh, you know employ people, more people, and uh, generate more revenue so that our the top line goes up and our bottom line. Is also improved as maintained. Okay, sir. Understood. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from Deep Paul, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is regarding the Denvisio Biomed, which is a subsidiary you have incorporated for trading of dental products. So when our existing product is not yet to capture the market share and um, we are at the nascent stage, then, then why the focus on trading of products which will dilute our ROC in the long term? Any thoughts on that? It has been primarily established to market the previous company's product because now previous has a very diversified product range. So. It, so for that, we have incorporated a subsidiary company which will focus only on the marketing of all the products, you know, so that uh, they can focus and they can, uh, you know, market the product successfully. So for that purpose, we have separated the marketing activity through the subsidiary company. And we are looking for the opportunity to do trading activities whenever we find a very profitable opportunity, you know, product line where we can generate uh, revenue for the company through trading activities. Currently, Denvisio is focusing only on the marketing of the previous Denpro products because new product line requires very specialized marketing uh, operations. And for that, the new team has been is being developed and uh, uh, trained, and uh, they will be responsible for... Uh, you know, domestic market uh, building, and that is the basic uh, and the main activity of the uh, Denvisio at present. But with the uh, with the uh, you know plan in mind that uh, whenever there is an opportunity, we will enter into the trading activity also. Okay, uh, thank you. And next question is regarding the increase of data days to sixty days. So. Is it that the product response are weak in the market, that's why you need to push the product, or it's as far with the competitors? Uh, any thoughts? Uh, can you please repeat the question? It was not clear or clearly yeah, obvious. It is regarding the data days. That is, we are giving a credit of 60 days, right, to our distributors. So we have increased it. So why is it so? Is the product response is weak, or we need to compete with the competitors? What is the reason? Um, sir, can I answer? I'll answer that. So, sir, no, uh, it's not that. It's about expanding our reach. And when you reach, when we increase our reach, we appoint new distributors, new dealers, and everything. And 
to the existing parties also we need to support with additional capital it's just that there is, this is all a secured uh, uh, capital that is there there is no nothing which is not uh, unsecured uh, this thing so any kind of uh, credit which has been given is uh, only for the expansion of the market and to grow the business that's the only objective okay uh, so it will dilute our roc right because we are increasing the working capital no in the long run no sir because it will actually end up increasing the revenue also and our uh, opportunity to uh, enter new markets but yes in a quarter you might see it that way but if you go in a longer run the entire uh, thing will be taken care to increase in uh, revenue okay 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 thank you so much yeah and none thank of this is in uh, to be very honest it's nothing in uh, out of line with whatever we have been doing it's just to uh give the additional boost to say uh, say the wherever it is required that sort of so else. other mnc companies are providing also similar kind of uh, yeah yeah it's a trade norm sir it's a trade okay. norm to work with the market that way okay thank you so much yeah we ask that you restrict your questions to one at a time uh, the next question is from sidharth Uh, Adarsh Capital, please go ahead. No, it's fine. All the answer questions have been answered. Thank you. You can go ahead. The next question is from Keetan Chada of Lexton. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'd like to know. Uh, my my question is uh, with respect to the uh, the sales and the EBITDA margins guidance that uh, was given in Q4 of uh, last year. You had mentioned that uh, you are uh, aiming for a 30% revenue growth and 40% or better EBITDA margins. Now, with the first half of this year's result, uh, how uh, do you still uh, stick to the guidance? because you know it it's going to be a tall order uh, because one you know you will have to increase your uh, uh, domestic sales if the imports uh, uh, sorry the exports are not um, uh, increasing and if your domestic sales are increasing then you know that's that's a low margin business i understand as compared to your exports uh, business so if if uh, how, how do you plan to achieve uh, these uh, twin objectives of 30% revenue growth and 40% with the increasing domestic sales And so I was thinking it's a new that is very minimum growth in this uh, uh, half year, first half year in the export, but we have done extremely well in the domestic market. And as I told you that we are looking for new business opportunities, and we are uh, you know growing very well in the North American market. in the europe as well as in the asian market we have seen substantial growth and we are focusing on these countries so that we can generate more business from these countries to cover up and to compensate for the loss and we are very confident that we will be able to reach to a respectable uh, percentage of growth in the export market also at the same time as we have already uh, discussed and informed that uh, uh, that there is Uh, you know all our efforts to grow in the domestic market at current growth is about 30 percent but we expect to grow uh, much better so that you know at the end of the year we have a respectable overall growth uh, if not 30 percent but to uh, somewhere to that close to that but at in the first six months we have seen that we are able to maintain the same abita and uh, you know at the same time uh, we are with our uh, research and development center we have been successfully uh, uh, we have been able to successfully uh, you know develop uh, some raw materials which were earlier imported so that that is also resulting in the cost saving uh, that will also help us to maintain our uh, our avita so all these uh, things uh, we are making efforts to Maintain our EBITDA and also grow our top line, but if not the thirty percent, but to a respectable. So we can uh, we can only try, and we are making efforts to grow to uh, as much as possible to cover up for the loss in the first six months. Okay, and and uh, the, so 
so the, the margins you are saying uh, would be maintained by uh, the the newer products that we would launch in the coming six months, and that will we help. We have uh, good margins in the new product line also. So the same level of margins we will maintain in the new product line. This is a very innovative product. We are confident we can generate good profits from the new product line also. Okay, understood. And my my next question is uh, with respect to the the foreign exchange crisis that you mentioned in the Latin uh, Latin American market. Now there is another company in the pharmaceutical uh, sector. You know uh, they are actually able to grow their business, and you know their their top line uh, has been much uh, is is much higher. They are a much bigger company, and they've been doing the business in the Latin American market for a very very long time, and they have announced the results very recently and. their results their commentary does not indicate any kind of foreign uh, currency uh, problems so i'm i'm a bit uh, confused that you know how come uh, they are able to do good business and grow their business and we are facing uh, challenges in doing our business for the latin american market uh see we are uh, main in the latin america we are mainly exporting our products to argentina and in africa our major exports are to egypt And Sudan and uh, a couple of more countries. All these countries are facing tremendous financial crisis, devaluation of their currency. So that is nothing, you know, hidden. You can also check everywhere. So this is a fact, and we are facing on account of these uh, from these countries where we had a very good business. So Peru is another country. So all these countries which had contributed. Uh, uh you know uh, significant amount of uh, revenue in the last financial year so all these countries are in trouble because of their devaluation and also because of the financial uh, you know financial crisis so i have named the countries so uh so the pharma product sector is a protected sector it is uh, a you know protected sector the government is giving You know, foreign exchange for the uh, pharma industry because without pharma, the country the uh, health uh, uh, setup will be totally disturbed. So it is possible, but we are facing the problem. So we have explained and we have named the country. It is everybody can check and confirm. So this is our situation. We have explained to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that that really helpful because the countries that you mentioned, like you know, normally uh, the company which I was referring to, they are not selling countries that uh, you are selling. So that that answers yeah. my question. The the next question is, you know, um, we've got uh, uh, tie ups and strategic yeah. collaborations with about twelve uh, uh, institutions in India. Um, are these uh, tie ups? Do they help drive uh, revenue growth as well? Because these are big uh, dental colleges. and they also would be having a good amount of requirement for the kind of uh, materials and products that we we manufacture so uh, do they help to drive a um, uh, good amount of revenue growth uh, as well our uh, director for research and academic is responsible for you know collaborations and uh, uh, academic cooperation with the, uh, these institutions i will request him to please answer this query Yeah. But think of this. Uh, to think about these things, uh, industry academia collaborations are very important because it is just not the the value it generates, but it is the innovation it can uh, uh, generate. You know, so we exchange ideas, uh, we create new products, and then every product we generate has to have a clinical evaluation and a clinical feedback from the academia. um otherwise the products would not go or do good in the market so that's a main thing so indirectly it will generate revenue the second kind of revenue is from the products which are being sold to these dental colleges uh, this is the second kind of revenue and a lot of people ask us um, um why are the dentists preferring uh, um uh products from the US or the Europe because we've always been trained on that product since we have MOUs with these institutes so these institutes try uh, previous products and introduce them to the students who will in future uh, be dentists who will be practicing so in turn uh, when they practice they will surely buy our products which 
will create more revenue for Privet Gen Pro. So it's a three-way source through which uh, innovation, research, and revenue, all three uh, boxes can be ticked. The next question is from Rahil Dasani of Mitel Analytics. Please go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, we have a question from Sachin Doshi. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening and thank you uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity. Uh, my question is more on, you know, so, uh, so you have mentioned in the past that uh, U.S. is basically an $8 billion market for us uh, and, and India being uh, around 140, 150 million uh, market. And, and we are doing good in the Indian market. We are growing by 30%. So what's, what's stopping us from growing in the U.S. market? Uh, uh, and, and, and do we see any challenges with acceptance of our product in any region? Uh, Mr. Raghav, please take this question. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, <clears throat> so we recently started. Uh, so first of all, the first challenge was to get our products FDA registered because U.S., is basically guided by FDA process, uh, this thing, and these are class one products, so drug uh, products, so these have to be FDA certified. We got them certified, and now we are evaluating different opportunities to grow into US, which is a much bigger market. But as you would understand, we just recently entered that, and it would take some time for us to capture the US market. As compared to India, India is definitely a market which also has a lot of potential. Yes, it is uh, to the tune of what you said, but going forward, it is, we are trying to gain more and more from the MNCs also and grow in this market in domestic also. In US, in times to come, we are working with different companies. As Mr. Uh, Mr. Modi also said, we are doing white labeling for one of the US companies. We are setting up our own uh, uh, products in that market. We are identifying the trade partners who can work with us. We have started with a few of them, but as we go ahead, we will see uh, this thing. And to answer the third part of your question, till today we have not, for, uh, to any market that we have gone to, we have not found an issue with the acceptance of our products because our products are all uh, certified through all the government agencies that or in the countries that we go to. Thank you for your question. You may re enter the queue. The next question is from Vikas Burma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. My first question for sales team number comparison from previous year or any target for, for sales team for next three years? Sorry, I didn't get your question, sir. If you can just. Sales team number uh, from previous year comparison or any target for sales team number for next three years? Yeah. So sales team, the numbers which, I, which we gave you in the domestic market for the sales team, they are a testament of that. We are grow, doing a growth of 30%. And as I earlier mentioned in my speech also, this is one sales team we have. And as we keep on going, we will keep on adding more people to the team. And we will keep on expanding to newer markets and to the rural uh, part of India also. And that is how we want to grow this. To put the exact number to this thing because the esteem will is a consistent uh, is will be a continuous process of improvement into this. So we don't uh, give them a three-year plan, but it's a quarter to quarter or a yearly plan that is discussed with them and close targets that are given to them. The next question is Manan of Electrum PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, uh, my question was regarding the dealer network. Last year it was 145. So how has the number grown and what was the dealer network number for FY22 and 21? I didn't get your question to you. Can you repeat? The dealer network was around 150. It was, uh, you told us in the FY23 concourse. So what is the dealer network right now? Has it increased? In the international market, this year we have added five new dealers. Okay. And the dealers have been included, added to the domestic market also. So overall, we have about 160, 165, 60 dealers now. Uh, 
in, in India as well as in the export, uh, you know, in the foreign market. The next question is from Rohan of Turtle Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. What are the challenges that you are facing on margin side? And what is the plan for increasing the sales? <laughs> Please repeat your question by you are not clearly audible. Yeah, wait a second. Okay. I wanted to ask you what are the challenges that you are facing on margin side because your margins have declined year on year on quarterly basis and what are your plan to increase in your sales? And what is the product mix it's if you can give any it is a margin. It is only a fluctuation, you know, I'm a two percent up and down in half it doesn't uh, you know signify uh, to decrease. It is in the half year because there is uh, very small uh, percentage uh, growth in the export market and there is uh, growth in the domestic market. Domestic market has got uh, you know uh, uh, less profitability, so that is why there is, we can see some fluctuation. But as I told that we are doing both substitution that is also contributing to uh, less cost of production. So the overall we are able to maintain the same level by both substitution, by uh, increasing our business in the domestic market, by increasing our prices, by operational, uh, controlling our operational expenses. So all these things are, uh, you know, under, uh, we are conscious about that and we are always controlling and trying to improve our productivity, efficiency, and, you know, focusing on the value-added product so that, you know, we can retain the profitability and maintain the same level of Avita as it is the past few years we have seen. So we'll continue and we'll maintain that. So 1 or 2 percent decrease is not a very significant if you look at the uh, the half year uh, figure. So, we are uh, possible that we cover up in the next six months. So, we will be in this range only 35, uh, 38 to 40 percent. So, we'll try to maintain the same level. The next question is from Ashish Sharma of Home. Please go ahead. Hi, I have the question around the sales number. I think enough is uh, said on that. But if I have to take an example of dental cart or Vasa dentistry, so in say financial year 20 to 23, in three years, their sales has been like 4.5 times increase in the sales number. And they're selling like dental products, maybe a little bit different, but dental products. While if I look at previous uh, your sales has increased two times in those three years. While the guidance has been that we are, we will try to grow at 30%, but if I look at other dental products company, their revenue is like five times versus yours two times in three years of span. So again, I think everybody touched upon that number, but is there something which we need to change internally to change the sales model or learn something from our competitors to increase that sales volume. Yeah. So see, if you're comparing two companies, actually it would not be a fair comparison to compare these two companies because uh, previous Dentro is a manufacturing company and we manufacture our own products and sell those. Compared to a Vasa identity which you mentioned, it's basically an online selling platform or a trading organization from that point of view. So for them, the growth will also come in in terms of the addition of number of categories that they come have, would have added in the last three years. They don't only deal in materials, they deal in uh, equipments, they deal in smaller equipments, larger equipments, they, they have all the products listed. Whereas we as an organization deal only in the dental material space, okay? 
that we are a manufacturing company versus a trading company, and that is where we discussed about then video being common and the future prospects of it. But at comparison would not be a right comparison because. For us, the, the uh, growth would only come in from expanding to new markets or within our own product portfolio, identifying the uh, products and selling them. Whereas for them, newer categories, newer product lines, and newer distinct is also an addition to their revenue. Second thing, if you, do, if you end up comparing this thing, the kind, one of the key principles of operating of Premium Dental Limited and which we still live by and will continue to live by is to operate on strong profitability and strong EBITDA margins and a good shareholder value for everything and building a long-term sustainable company. I think that's the objective of this uh, company and I think with the kind of EBITDA margins that we are currently operating at and the cash reserves we have, we are, we are poised to grow and we are open to any kind of opportunities which will suddenly take us from X to Y any given day from this thing because the fundamentals of the company any time remain strong. I think uh, I hope I have answered your question. The next question is from Yunash Matkar of Sushil Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so when do you see the export uh, issues to be resolved and when do you see them to pick up? That is my first question. And uh, I just missed uh, your guidance for uh, FI24 and 25 on the sales growth uh, for the company as a whole. So these are two uh, questions. As far as the recessionary situation on sales prices in different countries is concerned, so we do not have any control on these situations. So we cannot predict any change in the uh, you know, economic situation in these countries, we are uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, shift our business from these countries to other countries where there are better prospects and where their products are already acceptable and we are already selling things. We are focusing on selling our products and increasing our business in those countries. But we are getting business from uh, these countries where Islamic situation is not good, but we are hoping that when the situation becomes normal, uh, our uh, you know business will bounce back because you know these countries cannot continue to live like this for my, you know for a long time. So they will definitely turn uh, turn around and definitely they will be. It's just a matter of time, but we cannot predict any change in the situation. It is not in our time. If there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ronnie for closing comments. Thank you, Kate. On behalf of Hame Securities Limited, I thank Previous Dentro Limited team for giving their time and replying to all the queries in a detailed way. I would also like to thank all the participants for joining this call. On behalf of Hame Securities and Previous Dentro Limited, we wish you all a very happy Diwali. Over to you, Kate. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Hand Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line. Thank you. Thank you.